So as now we are ready. So we've just finalized text working uh, internally on a statement that I'll be making to Meta shareholders in favor of proposal seven. And it's on allegations of political entanglement and content management biases in India. Unfortunately, uh, not this video, but only the audio gets to them and it needs to be under three minutes. And if anybody is watching this, I would urge you to tell the shareholders of Meta to vote in favor of uh, this uh, proposed resolution, which is resolution number seven. Okay, so let, let me start reading out this text and it will be recorded. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to address you today. I am Apar Gupta, the founding director of the Internet Freedom Foundation. Today, my statement draws from the work of grassroots activists, human rights defenders, journalists, gender minorities, and lower caste groups of the most populous country in the world. I salute their courage and recognize their wounds. Uh, today, a crisis affects Meta's reputation, operations, ESG commitments, and ultimately your investments. Meta platforms are used by many, if not all Indians, and India is Meta's largest market. This widespread use by its very nature bears the weight of social responsibility by Meta. Today, Meta is failing in these obligations to the Indian Republic and its duty to its shareholders to make full and accurate disclosures regarding their investments. One prominent instance is when New Delhi suffered communal clashes in 2020 that resulted in 53 deaths. When a fact-finding report pointed towards the role of Meta, the company resisted summons by lawmakers in the Delhi Legislative Assembly and had to be directed by the Indian Supreme Court to appear. The court observed in quotes, Facebook has become a platform for disruptive messages, voices and ideologies. This is a pattern of Meta avoiding transparency and accountability to its users, public institutions and you, its shareholders. Today, Meta's bold response to the proposed resolution would have you believe that it makes quote-unquote extensive disclosures and has, in quotes, published an independent human rights impact assessment or a HRIA regarding potential human rights risks in India, end of quote. This is a materially false statement. The HRIA report has been withheld from publication despite demands by numerous civil society advocates, shareholders, including me, who were interviewed for it. Meta's four-page disclosures on the HRIA are self-serving, surprising, even stupefying. They contradict the testimony provided by me and is at substantial variance with the release of other HRIAs. Meta's cited justification for non-disclosure is also contrary to the UN guiding principles as interpreted by the Danish Institute of Human Rights, uh, which has been cited by them in its own defense to withhold publication. In fact, this states that quotes ideally such alternatives would be interim measures while companies work towards full disclosure of HRIA processes and findings. We have now waited three years from the communal clashes in Delhi and still there is silence from Meta. This is all the more troubling since India is set to witness a very polarizing election in May 2024 that is likely to have a high volume of disinformation transmitted through Meta's platforms. Today, I urge you, you all have a historic opportunity to prevent complicity in human rights abuses. I urge you to vote for this resolution. Although dual class shares make it impossible to secure a majority for votes, let it not prevent you from hearing the call of your conscience for the people of India. Please heed the evocation of Prime Minister Nehru on the eve of India's independence, where he stated in quotes, Peace has said to be indivisible, so is freedom, so is prosperity now. And so also is disaster in this one world that can no longer be split into isolated fragments. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your consideration. It's done.